That's hit beautifully. Good use of the feet straight down to long on. Magnificent use of the feet. Perfect on drive. Umpires uh, have the new ball and they're showing it to the scorers and the batsmen. Ancient bowling with the ball now and the new ball at Izzy Gillespie. Glenn McGrath, McGrath will get um, ball one over old. The umpires uh, made it clear that uh, the skippers told him to take it straight away. Well, superbly today, Gillespie. <laughs> Not far away. And uh, the batsman, Brian Lara, for one awful instant would have seen umpire Venkat start to straighten up. Uh, missing by oh, a good three or four inches. Runs again. Three leg buys and they all count. Oh, nice little off drive. Just waited for it and hit it hard. Three more. It's been a good day for Jimmy Adams. Oh, good shot. It wasn't that short. So Brian Lara says, cop that McGrath. Races through mid wicket. Jimmy's pulled out the hook shot and he's done it well. Bounces into the fence at square leg. That's a sign how good this pitch is. It certainly does, but it also shows a good attitude from Jimmy Adams. Jimmy Adams has been much more aggressive uh, since Australia took the second new ball. Shows up there and he's running between wickets. ball from Jason Gillespie and taking Jimmy Adams out side edge there Pretty much a half volley and that's the really would have liked Brian Lara but they're settled for Jimmy Adams and it's just going to make sure the day finishes on a high note for Australia and that's good reward for Gillespie he's got four wickets in the day four for 269 Irvin Dillon the night watchman That means that Ridley Jacobs drops back to number eight in the order again, which is, uh, I think, a big mistake. I think if they're going to send anybody in, they might as well send Ridley in. Jason Gillespie now has four wickets. In fact, all four. Getting a little outside edge there. Now, that'll be a great relief to Adam Gilchrist. His partnership was starting to look very, very dangerous. Lara scoring a magnificent century today. 135. Jimmy Adams out uh, in the final session for 49. No ball. And the local hero, Jason Gillespie, getting all four wickets for Australia. Just one ball to survive. The night watchman has done his job. Chance, no, it's gone through the gully. Picking the gap there between third slip uh, and the gully. And uh, now Lara's decided to take a third. So Mervyn Dillon will be on strike tomorrow morning. 
gates will be open. And that is a very, very important innings for the West Indies. They've now the given themselves a chance in this match at 4 for 274. And uh, that chance could improve uh, greatly if Brian Lara goes on. West Indies. Michael Dillon is the night watchman. He's got a job to do as well to maybe survive for three or four overs. Right up, over. For a few runs. And it'd be Gillespie to take up the attack from the city end. Very warm day in Adelaide. Northeasterly breeze coming across the ground. Lara, average getting close to 50 right. again. It was under enormous pressure yesterday. It was innings of class and great determination. Good start by Dillon. Being back to ball and picking up two runs. It looks to be a very good pitch. Even this morning, Westby's not charging in. He's bowling within himself. And it's probably the first morning of a test match with the Australians. I felt a little bit stiff, stiff and sorry for themselves. Good hard day in the office yesterday. Well, plenty of overs with little results. Very good shot. It's a very good start. Mervyn Dillon looked to me last night as though he'd gained a bit of confidence from uh, his innings in Perth. He got 27 in the first innings in Perth when uh, most of the other players failed. Looked to me as though he, uh, he was just playing a little bit straighter last night, perhaps with the confidence gained in that innings. That was a lovely shot. That was uh, a bit of an expansion of a good defensive technique. Just giving that one a flick off the, off the toes. Gone. Yeah. As a result, the Gillespie's got five. Well caught second slip by Mark Waugh. That's the end of the night, Watchman. A very good effort by Gillespie. That's good bowling. That'll help the Australians getting rid of the night, Watchman, quickly. Starts to get very frustrating when the tail ender hangs around. That's a good line, and the ball just moving away a little bit and moving quite late. Good sharp catch taken by Mark War. It's five for 280. Big moment for Marlon Samuels on debut, just 19 years of age, joining the great Brian Lara. Five for 280, the West Indies. Well placed on the second day. But Gillespie has done a great job. Five wickets. A beautiful late outswinger to a lower order batsman, just wide of the off stump. Made him play. Good, genuine Nick. Ball flew uh, quite quickly to Mark War. Good, comfortable height for a slip fielder. At that height, the fielder can take it with the fingers pointing down. First test match in Adelaide for Jason Gillespie, and he has uh, five wickets to his name. Well, what was it off the body by the look of it? We'll wait for the call from umpire Venkat. Going for four. By Venkat's dead ball. That's interesting. Well, that's a ridiculous decision because it was definitely a short pitch delivery. And as far as I'm concerned, he was trying to evade it. You can't tell me he was standing there to let it hit him. It's a short pitch delivery because it's hit him right up near the throat. It's got to be four leg buys. He's definitely trying to get out of the way of it. Strange, strange decision, that one. Start by Gillespie picking up the wicket of Dillon for nine, five for 280. Lara on strike to Glenn McGrath. Key period now with two batsmen in, Lara and Samuels, and Jacobs to come, and then the bowlers. Difficult for a bowler coming right arm over the wicket to get a left hander LBW unless he's bringing that ball back from outside off stump. Australians uh, getting a wicket in their first over this morning. Just a little bit of late outswing there for Gillespie. 
perfect uh, delivery just moved away at the last minute that's a very good delivery well taken by Mark War now there hasn't been uh, an air raid siren go off I'd say it must be uh, bees or wasps Glenn McGrath doesn't seem too worried about it the umpires are still standing but the rest of the players have hit the deck Yes, that was interesting the last time I saw anything like that happens when the guns went off one day and Fred Truman waved a white handkerchief. Here they go. Focus. Oh! Well forward. You can feel this time from McGrath. It'll be a bit closer, that one. Yes, that certainly looked uh, a lot closer than the first appeal. I'd say the first one was pitching outside leg stump, but I'm not so sure about that. Beautiful bowling here. He's got three and three times. A little shuffle there from Brian Lara. This is a great start by McGrath. Very warm morning, Adelaide. Ideal for batting. a very good start and good running oh. as well the one surprise there was that the Australians didn't throw to Brian Lara's end it was quite a sharp second run for Lara a man who's uh, got a bit of a hamstring strain uh, Stuart McGill fielded it there. He probably had a bit of a shot at uh, Brian Lara, except that no one was at the stumps. Oh! Big shout going down leg. Must be generating some pace now with a wicket this morning. It's a full toss and he puts it away. This is a good, good start. He's aggressive. He's looking to score. He's not overawed by the situation. Looked like a little bit of Carl Hooper in that uh, cover drive there from Marlon Samuels. Very sweetly timed. Pretty generous of the bowler too. This uh, second new ball was 15 overs old. Off the thigh pad or the pad didn't look like a bat at all. It sure didn't sound like a bat. There was a, a softish uh, noise. I guess the only thing that uh, could have been brought about a legitimate dismissal would have been the uh, the gloves. But uh, that one just perhaps uh, touching the body or flicking the sweater on the way through, but it certainly didn't sound like a nick. It's five for 293 as Ian Healy and Mark Taylor take up the commentary. Thank you, Bill. Ryan Lara's still there, 138. And Samuel's on 10. Well, oh, it was in the air, but he found the gap between second slip and a, and a wide four slip, and it goes all the way down to the fence for four. With a little bit of luck going the West Indies way. Without luck, McGrath has bowled well this morning. In close to the stumps, gets the length right. Teases him with a wider one. Lara obliges. And then he gets his luck. Luck hasn't gone the West Indies way this series. And of course, you've got to make your own luck, as they say. And that's what Brian Lara did. He went at it. Went at it hard. It was going to take some catching if it went to a man. Damien Martin, almost. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's hit some part of the body. It's going to go down for down for three or four umpires actually Steve Dunn's waved it away and said that's a dead ball no shot played those runs won't count five for 298 this over we've seen the third slip come into play he was third man they brought him up is he going to bowl straight or is he going to widen it now that that third man has come up I'm 
looking to play a few more shots. He knows now that if he gets it through that backward point there, it's going to be four. This one just coming back in on him a little bit, not quite wide enough to cut. In the end, probably did pretty well just to keep it out. I think we can see a lot more of those shots as this match progresses. The batsman gets himself into a good position to play a forceful shot, and the ball either gets on quicker than he thinks or not as quick, and there'll be uh, big missed times. No. There's three men in the line out there now. I know that Brian Lara is a four hitter. He really enjoys hitting fours. There's two men there. They're saving one and four. And there's also a man in that gap there. Out there, he's trying to save a boundary at point. That one's through the gap as well. And there's no third man in. So the plan hasn't worked. That will go all the way for four. A little fortuitously, though. Five for 302. There's the total. 302 on the left. Lamar 147. Samuels 10. In the air as well. That one's deliberate. That will be 150. 150 it's not a bad shot by any means. There was a bit of width there. He went after it. That's 150 runs to Brian Lara, almost half the total. 102 runs of that in boundaries. It's just the tonic the West Indies needed. The lack of histrionics suggests that he's got plenty more to come too. Buckle up, because he's thrown everything at that, knowing there's no fieldsman down there. And if it did go to a fielder it would take catching and there's that open face I think he wanted to get it squarer than it eventuated but with power and timing it'll get there oh should the girls concentrating on Leg stump for Marlon Samuels. He seems to be playing pretty straight. He doesn't seem to be a sweeper. He'll be disappointed that he missed out on that full toss, though. Work, Nick! He's missed uh, eight runs in two balls. This was earlier on today, his first delivery. Just glancing him on the chest. Kept his eyes on it, which was very important. Ball went down to third man and was signaled dead ball. No, that one I just cannot understand. Oh! In the law says if you are taking evasive action, as you're allowed in the runs that you do get for things like that, you've got to be deliberately padding away the ball for it to be a dead ball. Well, I don't think that could be described as deliberately padding away. Good long conference between Scott McGill and his captain. Exactly what sort of field he wants for Brian Lara, what line he'll be bowling. At the moment, there are two men out deep on the onside, deep mid wicket and a deep backward square. Getting a fair amount of turns, so I suppose he was thinking that it would be a bit difficult for Brian Lara to hit straight down the ground. So the men deep are mid wicket and backward square for the turn and the sweep and the pull. That's a good shot. Nothing wrong with the ball, it was uh, drifting away from Lara and then it was about to spin back when he gave it a fearful welt away through cover. Didn't give it too much opportunity to spin back. But as close as he possibly could to the pitch. Didn't use his feet, just stretched that right foot. Of course, with him being a left-hander, his front, front leg coming a long way forward. Um, just a fingertip job for the field at that time. McGill gave it a bit more air, and Lara gave it a bit more bat. Very powerfully hit again. 
didn't quite find the gap on this occasion but it was hit powerfully enough to get there anyway well, that's good hit I've got a feeling on the replay he was on his way before that left the bowler's hand five for 331 Grand Charles Nara and have a look at this shot again down the pitch straight down the ground men deep are mid wicket deep backward square so he goes straight that's good batting brilliant shot Young Marlon like Salmon is giving him very good support at the moment at the other end 21 to his name He's 52 nice. deliverance so far. Empire Vemcat will uh, give that. He says that uh, Samuels was playing a stroke. the umpires look to see where the bat is to see if it's behind the pad or not it was close to being behind the pad how far forward is getting there yeah, yeah, yeah. Punter. Punter. Wait, the shout was for punter and punter dived away to his left but couldn't stop Lara picking up that one run 6,000 runs in test cricket and becomes the seventh West Indian to do so. Yes, yes. Uh, beautifully placed. That's a super shot. So they put a man on the boundary, and what does he do but ease it just behind the man at backward point? You've got two great strokes in this over. The one just to the left of backward point. And now a wonderful sweep shot. Quite a beautiful stroke. Yeah. And once again, so delicate. There's a lot of bludgeoning going on, but also some beautiful little touches. Not as forced to have played that cut shot from Brian Lara. Needed to get it a bit finer. Couldn't put as much power in the shot to get it fine. Three runs. Beautifully played again. Short enough. All just bounced nicely so that he could could get on top of it and hit down on the ball. 350 up for the West Indies. There is a man at deep square, but he'd have to move pretty quickly to catch that. It's nicely played. 11 from that over, 5 for 354. to continue Lara looking for a double hundred here good batting conditions the outfield in magnificent condition a good crowd in building up now Saturday morning in Adelaide and Christmas shopping yeah. now gone there she's got him no it does the damage very well caught by Mark Waugh he went for the big square drive it went like a rocket and he caught it easily He's made it look so easy up until now. The wide full one into the rough. Foot wasn't there, but that always hasn't been the case. Mark War, a fantastic catch. And listen to the crowd, their appreciation of such a great innings. Brian Lara, extremely disappointed. The Australians, not so. That reaction tells me Brian Lara wanted more. Really disappointed. He's getting out for 182. 
Brian Laurel, great signs for the young West Indian players. All of those fellas, please watch. 29 uh, fours and 1-6. 29 fours and 1-6. The West Indies are now 6 for 3.54. Ridley Jacobs, who made a magnificent 96 not out in the first innings at the Wacker. 131 at Bell Reeve, comes in at the fall of the sixth wicket. The end of a magnificent innings from Brian Lowe, who's in control of the last half hour. Won a very good catch, went very quickly to Mark Waugh, caught it easily. The wicket for Miller. Brian Lara's front foot sometimes didn't make any further progress than that forward, but yet he timed it perfectly. Just got it wrong that particular occasion. And unlucky enough to get it close enough to first slip and then for Mark Waugh to take a ripper. You can actually see Brian Lara's boot get stuck in the wicket when he tried to move it further forward. Oh, yes, Mark. Come Jacobs. on, lads. Good common now. sense. Middle order batsman. Be batting too low. Here we go in here, lads. Come on. Bowling. Wicket maiden, six to three, five, four. McGill. Good Twice. shot, good use of the feet, keen to get it, McGill. Samuels hitting down the ground, didn't quite get it up the middle of the bat. It's up three. Everything spot on by Marlon Samuels, down the wicket, kept the bat straight, elbow snapped forward. There was a little bit of spin, didn't quite get it in the middle, but if he gets it close to the middle, there's no one there that can touch it. And then he ran really well between wickets. Pushed Ridley Jacobs into the third. Gill, yet to get a wicket. 108, out a wicket. Yeah. It's a pretty good start, isn't it? That's when it comes to the crease. Been sitting there for a long time. Four. Precious wings back. Top spin or a wrong one. Just a little bit short. And look at that use of the crease. Bang. Timing. It's right from the word goes. In great form. 96 in the test, as I said, 130 in Hobart last week, while Brian Lara made 230. Form's good. Oh, As again. This time, knocked down, just a single. But the right idea, the West Indies, they're playing their shots against the spin. Not turning a lot. Very good test. The Wacker, unfortunately, run out in the second innings, batting well for 24. Carried the first innings. And at about six, five for 20, 20 odd. Short gets, gets the treatment. That's a poor ball put away. Bold and four balls is over. Yeah, yeah. Nice start again by Jacobs. Pick up two more. No substitute for form or time at the crease. 131 at Hobart, 96 at the Wacker. It's the first time he's come in when it's been a little bit easy as far as the scoreboard is concerned. Ra hasn't got a wicket. He's 30 overs. Westby's been the star with uh, 5 for 89. I think we've seen the difference between Shane Warne and Stuart McGill here in this test match. Uh, McGill, very good turner of the ball, great wrong and great topspin variations. But maybe not the ability that Warren has to bowl a tight line and length on a day one wicket. Oh, good shot. Very good shot. And for the square boundary. It's done middle and leg and he put it away. Not fashionable as you say, Bill, but very functional and efficient. Glenn McGrath has been straight at the left-handers today. We've already mentioned that. Can't afford to be half volley as well. Six for 3.75, the Richie Benos of Adelaide. Seeing a very good test match. The West Indies winning the toss and six for 3.75. Oh. 
that's the one he should have put away. No ball called. And for that extra pace, Miller, he knew it was going to be the faster one. Forgot to readjust his <laughs> step. They're nasty when Miller bowls them and he gets it wrong down the leg side for the keeper. That's a big wicket. Colin Miller gets two. Did exactly the opposite of my suggestion, threw it in quicker, but suddenly quicker. 95 k's an hour rather than the normal 90 or 89. Trapped him in front. The pull shot wasn't on. Batsman thought the pace was going to be slower than that. A real big wicket for the Australians. Seven for 376 now, West Indies. So, second will. Nixon McLean, that was a big wicket by Colin Miller. Um, Marlon Samuels misjudged the length and the type of shot he was going to play. I'm not sure what he was trying to do here. It wasn't really a pull shot. Spun a bit. That was a pretty easy decision to give. It would take a middle leg. Stayed down a little bit and was a bit quicker. Pushed it through. The Aussies knew it was out. So did Marlon Samuels. I reckon about halfway through his shot, he knew I'm going here because it was on to him in a flash. Nixon McLean now face the last ball of Colin Miller. Around the wicket to the left-hander. Oh, it's a poor one. That's over. It's the over bowled. Ridley Jacobs uh, will be trying to hit a few boundaries, particularly early in the over. Right. And uh, that gives the Australians the opportunity to pick up his wicket. That's what makes it so difficult for Ridley Jacobs because he can't rely on the blokes at the other end. He has to play probably in a different fashion to the way he would really like to. He's got to be trying to hit boundaries off McGrath, and that's not an easy thing to do. That one's off the helmet. He might get four leg buys. Gran now coming around the wicket to the left-hander. Who slips a gully and a short cover are the catching men. out of two as he hit the ball. Jacobs will be looking for twos, fours and sixes as much as possible. Well, that's the ideal situation for a cricket crowd. They've got a uh, nice cover and a bit of grass to sit on for those who like the grass and nice plastic seats there in the foreground. Be fairly close, yes. Umpire Ben Katragovan says it's out. Really, uh, Nixon McLean playing too cautiously there and just hitting around what was virtually a full toss. The difficult to understand how he missed that delivery. It was full in length and he just played right around it. How do you miss those? Well, that is plumb. <laughs> Those three three Nixon, McLean out, LBW, a third wicket for Colin Miller. This West Indies side uh, would be a big game fisherman's uh, delight. Two Marlins in this side. Marlon Samuels and now Marlon Black coming into the crease. This is why he's there. Nixon McLean just completely missing a full length delivery. I could have hit mid stump, perhaps a foot up. Oh! 
8 to 382. Having much luck with LBW shouts and then McGrath. Definitely pitched in line, but winging off the miss off stump. Continuing on the same line towards the slip cordon. Brian Lara with the bulk of the West Indies score, 182. No other contribution reaching the half century. But an impressive debut by Marlon Samuels. Oh. Marlon Black off the mark. And importantly, he gets uh, Ridley Jacobs a bit of strike. Ball went a long way past the stumps, but the Indians didn't attempt another run because the ball hit the back of Marlon Black. Good shot. This was the incident with the ball hitting the bat. Alan Blackwell in his ground, and the ball hits the bat and ricochets. That's one of the unwritten understandings in the game. Not everyone does it, of course, but it's most people do. Oh. That's a good shot. He's got a good eye, Ridley Jacobs, and uh, cleverly he's decided that he's got to hit some boundaries. And I think he's decided the best option is the off spinner. Yeah! A big shout. Yes, he's got it. Justin Lang has taken an excellent catch at bat pad. That flew very quickly from Ridley Jacobs. Colin Miller bowling around the wicket. Five went into off stump. Looked like it bounced a bit. I'm not sure if it was bat pad or pad bat, but it flew out very quickly. Justin Langer took a very sharp catch moving to his right. That's a good wicket for the Australians. Miller's got his fourth. Put Langer. 21, West Indies now 9 for 391. Ex West Indian captain makes his way to the crease. Courtney Walsh batting at number 11. Average of 7.94 is not too bad, and you can be just about rest assured that he won't be hanging around here. They'll be looking to play a few shots. How do you reckon? Oh, that's a uh, shoulder of the battle glove and direct. It was a sharp catch. That's a very awkward position to be in there at uh, Silly Point. Langer has taken a beauty. Tighten it up a little bit. Oh, ah! well, that's very close indeed, and that's out, yes. Colin Miller will be on a hat trick when he starts the second innings. His first five wicket haul here in Australia and it's only his second five wicket haul over in his whole career. Courtney Walsh playing his shots. First it was Ridley Jacobs. He was out with a very sharp catch from Justin Langer. Well, angling in, bounced. Looks like it might have just flicked the shoulder. Oh yeah, the shoulder of that and the glove. Blue to Justin Langer. Excellent catch. First ball, Courtney Walsh. He said he wasn't going to hang around and he didn't. A big shot, strikes him on the back pad, and that's hitting about middle leg. That's fair enough. Uh, Colin Miller will be on a hat trick when we start the second innings. Special mention there for Brian. 400 runs, or close to 400 runs against the Australian side at the moment. Opening batsman Michael Slater there. Explosive type play up. 43.7. Turn the mood of a game very quickly, Michael Slater. He'll play his normal game and try to attack. Matthew Hayden at the other end. 
slowly getting that average up. He had a great start to his international career. Just 100 here, though, against the West Indies. 125 here four years ago, so he'll like this ground. Courtney Walsh. He just love one or two quick wickets before the tea break. Straight away, that new ball would carry through and the West Indies, as you'd expect with 391 runs on the board, they're pretty vibrant out there. He's hit that pretty well. And finally will cut it off. Alan Black down there. Michael Slater's away. With the uh, red shiny ball, there'll be a bit of extra bounce. I haven't seen much swing in this game so far. But there'll certainly be some extra bounce. Gillespie found that, so did McGrath, even just half an hour ago. Yes! And that's good running. Hit and run. 40 for Matthew Hayden, he's got hit as well. These two batsmen uh, were in the middle of a run out yes. up in Brisbane. Very close job in Perth. Yes. That's a good shot. Won't go for four, but he's punched it down the ground. He'll look for three. Wait, wait, wait. Good call for Michael Slater. Three weights there for Michael Slater. Matthew Hayden was going quick and was looking for three. Michael Slater didn't want it. thing is to judge the fieldsman. Courtney mm. Walsh couldn't get down for it. So uh, it wasn't perfectly timed, but the fielder Dylan, who's chased it, yes. has got uh, quite a good throwing arm. But I wouldn't say that he's moving all that freely at the moment, having uh, wait, made wait, the wait. chase and saved the single. LBW and okay, then maybe for bat pad. Right it's neither. Australia none for five after one over. From the cathedral end of the ground will be Marlon Black. Oh, for two here, Michael Slater. It's good running. He's realised as soon as he hit it, Michael Slater, that ball had gone to Courtney Walsh. Generally either bowls the ball in from the deep or underarm flicks the ball. Took off for the first one very quickly and got that comfortably for two. Pretty good delivery. May well go for four. A thick outside edge. Quite go. We get three. That's a bit of length for Marlon Black. Thick outside edge gets goes for three. Australia none for eleven. Aiden five. Slater six. A change in the commentary box. Ex England captain Graham Gooch joins ex Australian captain Ian Chapman. Thank you, Mark. Runs coming uh, thick and fast at the moment for the Australians. Matthew Hayden with the boundary there. Australia making a good start, chasing uh, 391. Oh, that's got to be very close. Suppose the angle that Courtney Walsh goes at might have just taken that one away from off stump. And that ball's right on target. And Courtney Walsh pitching middle and off, and good decision from the umpire. Ball going across, not cutting back enough. And that's an excellent decision from umpire Venkat. Yeah! Shout, uh, once again, I think there was a bit of. Uh, 20 cents each way there. Firstly the LBW and then some shouting for the court behind.
They're the men to uh, come in the Australian batting order. Ricky Ponting has moved up one slot with Steve Four injured. Wait. Oh, that's a good shot from Matthew Hayden. Mervyn Dillon was the culprit at mid-off. Courtney Walsh won't be impressed by a piece of fielding, that's for sure. Jimmy Adams there, the West Indies captain, pondering his next move, no doubt. Here's the West Indies card, Brian Lara, answering all his critics, coming up with the goods for his side. Magnificent 182, well supported by his captain. And then valuable contributions from Samuels and Jacobs down the order. Excellent shot. Didn't even bother to run, Michael Slater. Shouts of two, and I think you can increase that to three now that Nixon McLean has dived. Courtney Walsh. And yeah, and Michael Slater, I've seen quite a bit of him, and you've probably seen a lot more. He's one of those busy batsmen, isn't he, that never lets the bowler settle. Always looking for runs, always looking to get onto the loose ball. That one's gone very close to leg stump after it uh, thumped into the pad. Oh, yes, got it. It's coming. Slater opting to go for the pull here. Maybe the ball not quite short enough and dropping extremely close to his leg stump. was in the air, flew safely in the gap between third slip and gully, probably won't go all the way, might have looked to run for, that's settling for three, it's a long boundary down there, now at third man, that was certainly in the air for a long time. What's a nice shot, it was wide, it wasn't really a square cut, he just pushed into the gap, Timed it beautifully. Similar ball to last over, which he got caught on the front foot with. This time, gets the weight back, even if he is jumping. Doesn't need great bat speed. Gets the timing through for four. Well, that's a very good shot. That's a shot of a man who's actually seeing the ball very well. That was a very, very late cut, something you don't see a lot of these days. And that brings up the Australian 50. This is a shot normally reserved for wicket keepers, because they've got no others. Michael Slater, such control. Really isn't these three balls Mervyn Dillon's bowled to him. He's really got his feet set. Now he's even deciding to dabble with some finesse. Well, that's nice to hit as well. That's what happens when you try to alter your line, drift on the leg stump. Michael Slater picked this up very, very cleanly and put it away. That's a good shot. Very good start for Matthew Hayden. Second day a little warmer than the first. There's been uh, just a nice breeze out in the middle for the players. That's a lovely shot. That's just a gift. Full and wide of off stump. Still nine days to Christmas, but that certainly is preparation for Christmas. That's a catch it, but it was well away from mid on.
umpire Venkat is asking for a ruling there. They brought in this ludicrous uh, situation now where if the player goes into the gutter with the ball in hand, and be a four. He slipped uh, there. A bad time, uh, Darren Ganga. I don't know why administrators uh, continue to complicate matters. If the ball hits the fence, it's four. If it doesn't hit the fence, it's not a four. Now, all you're doing here is just wasting time while they check and see if the man had his foot in the gutter. I, I just think that complicates a situation that doesn't need to be complicated. Slater is on uh, 44, Hayden 29. Oh, Slater uh, treating Mervyn Dillon with disdain. I think Mervyn Dillon just congratulated Michael Slater on his lovely footwork. Yep. Slater's pushing for two to bring up the half century. There it is, yet another one for Michael Slater. Half century and in very good time. Just 72 balls faced by Michael Slater. That's excellent going in a one day game. And this is a test match. It's four more. I think the only way Dylan's going to get Slater out is if Slater gets uh, totally overconfident. Well, this is just another gift again. It's short, it's wide, just gets hit through the offside quite easily. Nice good shot. Short boundaries here at the Adelaide Oval, but uh, that would have reached the boundary on a, a much bigger area. It's a great shot for Michael Slater. He's got the ability to take the ball on the up. And this ball not particularly full for Nixon McLean, McLean, but he stood up, taken it to the top of the bounce, and drilled it through the covers. And that's a shot of a man in confidence. Me Adams. West Indies captain, occasional bowler, left arm spin, often bowls over the wicket to the right-handed batsman. So now we're going to try first up around the wicket, conventional field. Starting with a man back on the cover boundary. Yes, yes. Which has served him well on that delivery. It's a pretty defensive field. He didn't quite get that. He's still going to get a four. He's picked it up from well, fractionally outside off stump and belted it away. 103 on the board now. Hundred and eight on the board, twenty-six overs. Go on the run rate is uh, moving along very, very nicely. It's a beautiful back cut. There's a man down there at square point, just, just behind the line of square. But that is a super shot. He's played two late cuts. One off the fastball at Dillon earlier. It was a great stroke. And uh, then this one off Jimmy Adams. Well, that's a good shot. Billy will cut it off. Uh, it was still nicely timed and very well placed. Still to come, Justin Langer, Mark War, Ricky Ponting, Damien Martin, Adam Gilchrist, but they can't get a go at the moment. 72 to Slater and 38 to Hayden. They're taking the ball down, Marlon Samuel. Now, it's going to be double spin but Jimmy Adams on at the city end 
And now it's going to be Marlon Samuels, the uh, young player from West Indies, making his debut. And he bowls off spin. That is a very, very powerful hit. Straight down the ground, longest part of the ground. Michael Slater there, 75 runs, eight boundaries, only 94 balls. Fantastic strike rate. That is a beauty. Courtney Walsh won't give anyone too many liberties. Leg by. No one was shouting for OBW. Perhaps they might now. This ball coming off Matthew Hayden's inner thigh pad or his leg thigh. Jimmy Adams spreads him out. Three on the onside, almost on the boundary. No, what was that? Oh, was a good dart in that leg stump. Just one man in what would be the fielding circle in a one-day match, and those three out on the fence. They're the four fieldsmen on Matthew Hayden's leg side. So he decides to bowl a short ball outside off. Courtney Walsh can't cut it off. Matthew Hayden goes from 44 to 48. The slightest of effort. All sorts of worrying signs out there at the moment for the West Indies. Okay. Both batsmen are very keen to face Marlon Samuels at the moment. They're both trying to get as much of the strike as they can against Samuels. They know he's in his first test. He'll be a bit nervous. How is that? That was a quicker one. What a confident shout, though. 111 kilometres an hour, that one, so that was quicker. Yeah, it was almost a seam up, pitching well outside leg. Good decision. Marlon Samuels did his job in the cathedral end by keeping it tight. Courtney Walsh can now attack a little bit more, but just trying to stop the runs, draw either Matthew Hayden or Michael Slater into a false shot. They know if they get, they if they get a new batsman in, the whole, game, the whole game could change. Direct hit. That'll be Matthew Slade, Matthew Hayden's 50. Second in the series, only three inches, along with a 44. He's having a very good summer so far. eight deliveries so pitch will be covered here be like Merv Hughes batting against the Windies a few years ago full of crosses getting hit from pillar to post probably have to guess this one a shorter ball it might 